Hello everyone, I am Rohit from Talent Battle. In this video, we will be discussing Accenture specific pseudocode questions. All these questions are previously asked questions and definitely they will be helping you for your practice. Before starting with the actual questions, let us discuss about the important points that you should revise. I have created a list of these important points based on the analysis of previously asked questions under pseudocode section. Most importantly, the programming fundamentals. Whatever the programming language you are dealing with, basic fundamentals you should be very clear with to solve the pseudocode section. The questions which comes under pseudocode sections are logically and how the exact flow of the program is. If you understand this, then easily you can solve these questions. Apart from that, looping statements, arrays, recursion concept, basic functions, these are also the topics on which the questions are there. So if you just revise this, that will definitely going to help you to solve these type of questions. Most importantly, the operators and especially bitwise operators. You will see a lot of questions based on bitwise operators, then increment and decrement operators as well as conditional statements. So I would suggest that before practicing, let us revise all these particular important topics so that it will help you for solving the pseudocode section. Now we will be solving 10 pseudocode examples in this particular video. Let's go one by one. Parallelly, you can also solve this and just put your answer into the chat box. First question. How many times the loop will execute? A for loop is given to us starting from i equals to 0, i less than equals to 10, less than 10 actually, not equals to, and i plus plus. And in the body of for loop, they are asking i equals to i into 2, i minus minus. The question is how many times the loop will execute. So we have to calculate the iterations over here. Now if you analyze the loop step by step, First, my initialization is happening from i equals to 0. Then I am checking the condition that i is less than 10, which is going to be true. So my loop body will start. So as long as my i value is less than 10, my loop will execute. But if you see the loop body, what I am doing, i equals to i multiply by 2. So i is getting multiplied by 2 here and after that i minus minus means decrement the value of i by 1. So if you see this, instead of i minus minus and if you see this i plus plus, it is incrementing the particular value by 1. So if you go iteration by iteration, my first iteration, if I calculate iteration 1, initially i value will be 0 and my loop condition will be 0 less than 10, which is true. Then inside the body, i is equals to 0 multiply by 2 which gives me 0 then i minus minus will convert that i value to minus 1 right and then you again go back to the next iteration but before going to the next iteration you will increment the value so my i plus plus will give me minus 1 plus 1 equals to 0 so my condition check in the second iteration will be i again 0 and 0 is less than 10 which is again true now if you observe the pattern here every time i am going into the body my value of i is 0 and it is decremented by 1 so it becomes minus 1 and when i am going to the next iteration i am updating my expression by i plus plus which is again getting 0 so every time my value is getting reset to 0 at the beginning of every iteration because there is a combined effect of i equals to i into 2 and i minus minus. So due to this my loop will execute in an infinite manner and I am not going to reach i as 10. So my condition will be always true and that's why the answer is option D, infinite. So if you see the questions are very fundamentally, basic fundamentals are there. and. Within one minute, try to solve the questions in one minute. 
and if you identify a pattern then easily you can finalize your answer let's move on to the next question question 2 what will be the output of the following pseudo code for value a equals to 2 and b equals to 3 so a and b is given to us if you see the pseudo code there is a function do something integer a integer b two parameters and inside the body if b is equals to 1 means b equals to equals to 1 will return 0 so i can write it down like this if b is equals to equals to 1 we will return 0 otherwise we will return the current value a plus again there is a function call so it's a recursion the concept of recursion is utilized here with the value a and b minus 1 right so as i said there are questions based on recursion also so this is the same question now we have to predict the output by considering the value of a is equals to 2 and b equals to 3 so let's see how it goes do something when first time i am executing it with the value a is 2 and b is 3 go inside the function and check if my value b means 3 is equals to equals to 1 which is false so you will go to the else block and you will return the current value of a that is 2 plus now this return is an intermediate operation so that will get stored in stack and at the end of all the recursive calls when we will reach to the base condition this is my base condition so we will recollect all the results and then final result will be obtained so return 2 plus the function call again that is do something with a new value update a is as it is though that is 2 but b has modified 3 minus 1 so it becomes 2 again so this is another function call recursive call so let's expand this now again check the condition if b that is 2 equals to equals to 1 this is also false so again perform the else block execution where we are returning current value of a that is 2 plus another recursive call to the function do something with value a as it is that is 2 and b value is again reduced by 1 so 2 minus 1 is 1 so one more recursive call now if i expand this if my b value is 1 equals 2 equals to 1 which is true and we'll go in if block only and we'll return 0 from here so my base condition is done now so now when you reach to the base condition we have to recollect all the results so return 0 from here and return 2 from here so 0 plus 2 is 2 and then return 2 from here so actually we'll get 0 plus 2 plus 2 which leads to 4 so every iteration is in front of you and that's why the final answer will be 4 so option b is correct here based on recursion i hope it is clear to you let's move on to the next question consider the below pseudo code involving a while loop and we have to predict the output count is given equals to 1 result is initialized to 0 while my count is less than equals to 5 i am calculating the result and result is equals to result plus count count equals to count plus 1 so it is getting incremented by 1 end of the while so at the end of the while loop what is the value of result variable that we have to predict okay so let's go in, uh, based on iteration by iteration initializing if i see my count variable is initialized to 1 my result variable is initialized to 0 so my first iteration when my while loop will check that count is 1 less than equals to 5 which is true i will go inside the loop and i will calculate the result is equals to current value of result is 0 plus count is 1 so it becomes 1 and my count is equals to current value 1 plus 1 that becomes 2 then next iteration while my 2 is less than equals to 5 which is again true so my result will be make sure that every time you are using updated value the recent current value you are using so result is current result in the previous call was 1 so i am taking it 1 plus the updated count value is 2 so it becomes 3 and my count will be 2 plus 1 that is again 3 right then third iteration will be while my count is 3 less than equals to 5 
which is true i will go and calculate the result variable result is equals to 3 plus 3 that gives me 6 and my count will be 3 plus 1 that becomes 4 the next iteration while 4 is also less than equals to 5 which is true again so my result is equals to current result is 6 6 plus 4 that gives me 10 and count is equals to 4 plus 1 that is 5 then one more iteration will be there because 5 less than equals to 5 is also true so my result is equals to 10 plus 5 equals to 15 and my count is equals to 5 plus 1 that becomes 6 and next time when you check the while condition 6 less than equals to 5 will be false and your loop terminates so when your loop terminates what is the final value in the result 15 so your output of the result will be 15 now if you identify the pattern after one or two iteration you will get that identification of pattern that what is happening exactly so quickly you can just go with the pattern and finalize your result so it will save you time now here we are understanding the question so i am explaining in detail each and every step okay so but in examination make sure that you have to complete the task within 60 seconds so you can go with that approach by identifying the pattern so i hope this is again clear let's move on to the next question question number four what will be the output of the given pseudo code for a is equals to 5 b equals to 2 and c is equals to 6 so these are the values that are initialized or provided to us then in the pseudo code if you see there is a function which is accepting three integer parameters c is calculated a and c plus b then after that there is a for loop whenever you see like this in pseudo code that for each c from 3 to 6 means your for loop is going to run for c value 3 4 5 6 all four iterations you have to consider in the body of for loop this line we have to execute that will calculate the value of a outside the for loop we are calculating b and then finally we are returning a plus b now there are symbols that they have used ampersand symbol they have used so there will be a explanation about that symbol how exactly it works so they have given that this symbol is a bitwise and as i said bitwise operators many questions will be based on this approach also so bitwise and operator is going to compare your each bit of the first operand to the corresponding bit of the second operand and if both the bits are one the corresponding result is set to one so it's actually a and truth table logic that's it right so we can go with that and truth table logic as we all know that bitwise operators are going to work on the binary values so when both output both inputs are one the output is one otherwise it will be zero so we'll calculate according to this now for every step so first step after initializing a equals to 5 so what is the binary representation of 5 0 1 0 1 then b equals to 2 what is the binary for 2 0 0 1 0 and c equals to 6 the binary representation will be 0 1 1 0 now in the first operation c is equals to a and bitwise and with c plus b so if you see what i am doing 0 1 0 1 is bitwise anded with 0 1 1 0 and it is going to give me 0 1 is 0 0 1 is 0 1 1 is 1 and 0 0 is 0 so i am going to get 0 1 double 0 in decimal it is 4 right so a and c is 4 plus b plus b so what is the value of b b is 2 now so i will be getting c is equals to 4 plus 2 that is 6 then iteration starts so as i said it is saying c is from 3 to 6 it looks ambiguous actually but you have to consider that interpretation of this will be four times my loop will go for every iteration value will change c is three then four then five then six so four iteration but in the body of the loop we are not using that c value we are just calculating a value every time okay so let's do four iterations this is iteration one where a is equals to current value eight plus one and ended with a so we are actually doing nine ended with a 
so the binary value is 1001 and it with 0101 which gives me 001 i am using this truth table logic uh, for calculating the and bitwise and operation so parallelly you can check the bits so in decimal the conversion is 1 it means at the end of first iteration my value of a is 1 okay so i will say a is 1 in first iteration then in second iteration iteration 2 a is equals to again 9 and it with a that gives me 1001 and it with 0001 same operation right because a is changed now got my point initially it was different so now we have calculated it one so i am using that updated value in the second iteration so 1001 and it with 0001 will give me 0001 which is in decimal again one so for second iteration also a is one then third iteration also if you check it will be same because we got the same value for a and in fourth iteration also it will be same so at the end of fourth iteration my value of a will be 1 you can check for all iterations in the similar manner after the for loop ends after the fourth iteration the for loop ends with gives me value a equals to 1 and then i will calculate b so now my b is equals to 12 plus 6 and it with a and that is nothing but 1 so 12 plus 6 is 18 and it with 1 so binary of this will be 1 triple 1010 uh, and it with 0001 which is going to give me 0 so in decimal my value of b will becomes 0 but what we have to return we don't have to return the value of a or b we have to return a plus b so a was 1 and b got 0 so we are finally returning 1 and if you see the options there is 1.0 so we'll select that 1.0 right so correct output is 1.0 if your value of a is 5 to and c is equals to 6 so option d is correct so it's all about binary representation the truth table logic and calculating the bitwise operations and if you identify a pattern you can save up the time and finalizing the value okay move ahead with the next question now question number 5 what will be the output of the following code when my n is 9 so what is my pseudo code n is 9 initially then if 9 modulus 3 is equals to 0 nested if is there again condition with 5 not equals to 0 we will print this otherwise else otherwise this so you need to identify this if and this else are together this if and this else are there so let's check the condition and easily we can figure out the output so first initialization n is equals to 9 then we are checking the first if condition that 9 modulus 3 equals to equals to 0 right so this is true 9 modulus 3 is 0 so we will go inside the if block right you go inside this inside this another if you are checking that 9 modulus with 5 is not equals to 0 so 9 modulus 5 is not equals to 0 because it is actually 4 so we'll get true again for this condition and you will go inside this so it is going to print the first line that is type 1 that's it so as this if is positive else will be skipped this else will also be skipped so final output is type 1 option a is correct got it it's easy just nested if concept is there if else combinations you have to check the modulus operator for condition check and based on that you can finalize your result next question question number 6 what will be the output of the given pseudo code for a equals to 2 b equals to 7 and c equals to 5 again a function similar category a b c three parameters of integer type with this values then in function there is a for loop going from 3 to 6 which is calculating a after for loop we are calculating c and then we are returning a plus b 
not C. So C is not involved actually. So we can skip this particular step, the last one. Anyhow, we are not going to invest time here because C is not the part of final result. So only we will perform the iterations of for loop. A will be calculated. Updated value of A at the end of final iterations will use here and B as it is. But the symbol, the cap symbol they have given is nothing but the bitwise exclusive or XOR. So here we will be requiring XOR truth table logic. And what they have said here that this operator will compare every bit of the first operand to the corresponding bit of the second operand. If one bit is 0 and other bit is 1, the corresponding result is set to 1. So according to the logic of XOR, if you have 1 and 0 combinations, the output is 1. Otherwise, it will be 0. So we'll use this, right? So similar to previous question, previous type of bitwise question, we'll solve this again. For every iteration, we have to make the calculations. Initial values are given a2, b7, c5 and the for loop will run for c is equals to 3, 4, 5, 6, 4 times, right? So let's do the calculations. First bitwise XOR of 9 and 6 will require. So 9 in binary will be 1001. Then 6 in binary will be 0110. And 9 XOR 6 will be XOR means 0 1 is 1, 1 0 is 1, 0 1 is 1. So 1 1 1 1. That is nothing but 15 in decimal values, right? So let's perform the iteration 1. In iteration 1, a is equals to 15 plus a, which is 2. So we got 17. We already calculated this, no? So 15 plus 2 is 17. In second iteration, updated value, a is equals to 15 plus 17, that is 32. In the third iteration, a equals to 15 plus 32, that gives me 47. In the fourth iteration, a equals to 15 plus 47, that gives me 62. So when my four iterations are done, 1, 2, 3, 4, final answer for a is 62. And if you calculate this, see anyhow it is not going to contribute your final answer. So you can save the time. That's it. No need to calculate this. But now if you are doing it for understanding, you can do the bitwise conversion of 10. That will be 1010. XOR with the same value 1010 will give you 0. Anyhow, so value of C will be 0 XOR with 5. The value of C is 5 now that is given. So 0 XOR with uh, 5 will give you 5. But that is of no use here. We are returning A plus B only. So when you return A plus B, A value is 62 plus B value is 7. So that comes out to be 69. So final answer will be option A, 69. Right? This is how it goes. So properly you need to analyze every step. Otherwise, if you keep on solving the C also, that will definitely consume your 10-15 seconds, which is of no use. You have to check properly what exactly they are expecting. And pseudocode questions are meant to be developed for time consumption process. So identify the pattern, stay focused, check every particular line, what they are expecting as an answer and according to that, try to solve it on quick basis. Next question. Question number 7. Consider the following code. A function definition is given. Function add 5 which is taking one argument in which new value pass out is calculated based on the argument plus 5 and we are returning this pass out. From main program, we declare the input value as 25. We declare output value variable. We call the function add 5 with the input value. So 25 is a parameter. We will return something that will go to output value and we have to display the result of output value. And the question is, what is the output value that is pass out if the input value pass in is set to 25? So 25 is a parameter that we are passing in simple words, right? So function is taking an input here inside the function we are calculating pass in plus 5 and input value is set to 25. So it's actually a function call of add 5 with value 25. Then inside the function you are calculating pass out is equals to current value plus 5 that gives me 30. So function is going to return 30 from here. Got it? So that 30 will go to output value that 30 will go to 
output value. So final answer is option B, 30. So easy, it's based on functions, concept of functions, calling a function, passing the parameter, calculating the results, returning the value and that again we are displaying it. The next question, question number 8. What will be the output of the following pseudocode for A is 6 and B equals to 3? Again here nested if I can see inside the function but the operator that they have used is right shift and left shift again a bitwise operator question okay this is also dependent on bitwise operators so inside the function if a is left shifted by b bits and if this is true will go inside this if says that a is right shifted by b bits will return a plus a otherwise will return b plus b so this if ends here this is associated this if is outside but finally we are returning a from here only we are returning a from here then what about the symbols as i said right shift operator bitwise right shift operator will take two numbers and it will right shift the bits of the first operand based on the second value so let's say for example if i am saying five right shift by one so it will shift the binary bits of five by one unit same with the left shift also right so just for an example but we will solve it here also for the given values and then they are saying that if of x means any value comes here which is not zero then it will be executed if right so let's do the calculations then we'll get to know what is the exact value there so let's do initial calculations a is equals to six if i convert it to binary it will be zero one one zero and b is equals to three then first if condition says that if my a is left shift by b so we are checking here if the result of left shift operation is non-zero then only will go inside now so shifting the bits of a to the left by three positions because b is three so we are shifting the bits of six actually so six if i write down in eight bit binary it will be zero 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 and 0 1 1 0 and we have to shift left shift we have to do by three positions so if i shift them by three positions shift by three positions it will give me uh, this one two three will be shifted here so it will be 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 and if i calculate it in decimal 1 2 4 8 uh, 32 and 16 48 it will give me decimal value 48 and 48 is a non-zero number it means my this condition is true so actually we are checking e for 48 here in simple words and this is true will go inside now we'll execute the second if now second if is saying a is right shifted by b positions so it means 6 is right shifted by 3 positions Again, my 6 in binary representation 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. But I am shifting it by 3 positions in right. So if I shifted 3 positions in right, we know that whatever the new positions will get will be always replaced with 0. Na? So finally, my shifting will give me all zeros here. And in decimal, it will be 0 again. So it becomes if of 0. If of 0. So condition is false. If of 0 means false, you will go to the else block. And what we are returning in the else block? B plus B means we are returning 3 plus 3 which gives me 6. So the inner if condition is evaluated to false. Outer if is true. But inner if is false. So we go to the else block and we return B plus B. B value is given as 3. So 3 plus 3 will be 6. We are returning from here. So the final output here is 6. So we directly return so we don't need to check for other cases so option c is correct so the base of this question is bitwise shift operators right shift and left shift and if you got a not zero value in if then it will be considered as true if you got zero it will be treated as false let's move on to the next question question number nine consider the below code what will be the expected output if the code is executed 
function point one declare integer x declare integer p y oh pointer based question pointer of y pointer of z assign the value of x to twenty value of y is nothing but the address of x value of z is nothing but the value of y then p y is incremented p z is incremented by one and we have to display current value x value of y value of z so three outputs we are expecting here from the function okay so let's try to consider it. Uh, on the basis of pointer so it will be easy for us to understand what is happening exactly okay now see when x is declared here it's a integer value right so x is a integer py is a pointer to an integer value that is y pz is another pointer to an integer value that is z and i am assigning the value of x is equals to 20 so what is value of y is nothing but the address of x see it is written here and value of z is equals to value of y so can i say this is also holding the address of x no because value of z is equals to value of y is equals to address of x it means z is also holding the address of x then you are incrementing the py by one so the size of the integer increments the pointer in second case also you are incrementing the pointer pz by 1 the size of integer and then you are displaying x y and value of y and value of z this is what the basic what they have given in the pseudo code now if you understand the pointer arithmetic if there is a concept called as pointer arithmetic whenever we say that we are incrementing a pointer so py and pz are incremented means they will points to the next memory location after x so the original value what they are pointing to which is nothing but the address of x will not change will not change for the display operation so display operation is going to display the value of x that is equals to 20 and the address of x which is the same for y and z now see we have seen that if y is equals to address of x and z is equals to value of y means exactly it is equals to address of x so the address of x which is same for both y and z so first output will be x that is 20 value of y will be nothing but the address of x and value of z is same because it is pointing to the same location so again it is address of x and pointer arithmetic if you are looking like this that i will increment the pointer by one so it will definitely go to the next address but value remains the same the x value remains same they are pointing to the new location next memory location does not change the display operation so that's why these are the outputs that we will receive here so option b is matching first value x is 20 y is address of x z is address of x got it so option b is correct for this question and now the last question question number 10 what will be the output of the given pseudo code for a9 b7 c6 this is given again a function which is working on and as well as uh, xor both combination if the condition is true we'll execute this and we are returning a plus b plus c so let's calculate it for every step maximum question based on bitwise cases so let's do the initialization a equals to 9 in binary it will be 1001 b equals to 7 so in binary it will be 0 triple 1 and c equals to 6 it is 0 1 1 0 we are using and also and we are using xor also so check the first if condition now first if condition will be a ended with c ended with b if it is less than b ended with a so break it break this down in two different cases a ended with c ended with b so bitwise and for a b and c so let's solve first to a and c will give me 1001 ended with 0 1 1 0 which is equals to 0 now only one one combination will give me one otherwise it is zero so in binary this is zero then this 0 0 0 0 is ended with b which is equals to 0 0 0 0 ended with b value is 7 so 0 1 1 1 so this is also going to give me 0 right so this is 0 
this entire block is now zero then second part b ended with a that gives me 0 1 1 1 ended with c no a 1 0 0 1 so b and a are ended now that gives me 1 1 is 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 so 0 0 0 so it is giving me 1 from here so my condition what if condition becomes my if condition is 0 less than 1 which is true means this condition is finally true let's go and calculate the inside part b is equals to b is equals to 6 plus b b is 7 so that is 13 then a is equals to updated value of b that is 13 xor with 4 plus 13 this is what we are calculating so 13 in binary we have to consider because we are doing xor operation here so that is uh, 1101 4 and 8 yes 1101 and uh, 4 in binary will be 0 1 0 0 and we are performing XOR here XOR means 0 1 is 1 and 1 0 is 1 so we will be getting 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 so 1 2 4 8 9 so we are getting 9 from here a is equals to 9 plus 13 we have not added that 13 it's the 9 is only the answer of 13 x or 4 right so we have to do 9 plus 13 that will be 22 so at the end of this line a is 22 b is already 13 that we have got right we have calculated it here so now after these two operations i have a equals to 22 i have b equals to 13 and c is unchanged C is same that is 6 so what is the addition because we have to return a plus b plus c so 22 plus 13 plus 6 will give me 9 11 and 4 41 41 is there yes option b option b is there so final answer is option b so the function is just accepting integers we are checking if condition if that condition is true we'll calculate b and a Use that updated value of a and b for final addition of a plus b plus c. c remains unchanged throughout. And final answer we got is 41. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you have understood and I would like to thank you for patient hearing. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also please like, share and do recommend to your friends. And stay tuned for upcoming such videos regarding Accenture and other company specific material. Thank you once again. Have a great day.